with all due disrespect, Izzy, I'm doing the talking this week. You just stand there. We're here at Gulf High, undefeated Gulf High, for a special Halloween edition of Friday Night Rewind. Excuse me. Yeah. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh my gosh. You didn't expect to see me here, did you? He kidnapped me a week and a half ago. I've been locked in a trunk. Where have you been? Did you come looking for me? No. Did you? What? Not at all? No. And were you worried? Did well, you call me? Well, did you email me? Uh, I didn't think so. Well, I'm telling you what. This is a two-man show, not a three-man show. You got a choice to make, mister. You're right. Um, Leon, John. What? After all the Come get rid of Mr. Monotone here. <sighs> hey man, thanks. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Ooh. Hey, look, well, let's 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 do the show. Yeah, I'm Joey Knight. And I'm John Cody. And this is Friday Night Re Ooh, wow, rewind. No, guys, put it put his head back on. Put his head back on. Infinite skills. Oh, oh. TampaBay.com is the source you trust. We got imitators, but they don't do sports like us. We got the county battles and crosstown rivalries. Highlight Central, we hit you with what you gotta see. If you're not in the crowd, online is where you gotta be. For Friday Night Rewind, the season two odyssey. You knock them in the dirt every play. Don't worry about making a mistake. You make it happen. Winners make it happen. Losers make excuses. Don't be afraid. The tape was yours. Not tonight, baby. Not tonight. The stain on Bloomingdale's football program is obsolete. Like word processors, polyester bell bottoms, and Cody's 32 inch waist side. Oh it's history. Oh the Bulls. Oh which have existed since 1987, have clinched their first winning season with a 27-22 win against Brandon and the playoff berth. Before the Bulls made history, Brandon made things interesting. Sean Watson had an early 10-yard touchdown pass from Josh Sellerin to give the Eagles a 7-0 lead, but Bloomingdale rallied. Eugene Perry's long run here sets up Derek Johnson's touchdown run, and then Ty Henderson's 46-yard punt return, the first of some great special teams highlight. C.J. Kern sack set up a Bloomingdale safety. The Bulls led 17-7 at halftime, but barely six minutes into the second half, Brandon had retaken the league. Mike Savigny scored twice. This pass to Watson set up the second Savigny score, five-yard touchdown run, but the Bulls would rally behind huge special teams plays. There's a block by Tristan Huff, and then Dylan Lassiter just getting smothered in his end zone, fumbles. The ball's picked up by Jason Miller for a touchdown. Another high snap dooms Lassiter again, another Bulls safety. The Bulls, 27-22, make history. I knew we were going to find a way. I knew we were going to find a way because I knew that these kids is their destiny. Hold it up, hold it up. This team has worked so hard. We've been through so much. This is 20-something years of this monkey on our backs, and now it's gone. I'm ecstatic. We finally got what we deserve. We've been working so hard. I've been here since my freshman year. Had a chance to go to another school. Came here because I wanted to be with my team, and we finally won. We finally got what we deserve. You know, Bloomingdale wasn't the only program in this area to clinch its first winning season ever tonight. Palm Harbor University did the same thing. The Hurricanes won their sixth game in a row with a 14-10 triumph against East Lake. All right, I don't care what we have to do. I want you to block like the life depended on it. All right, we got to play with heart because this is our game. Well, we, uh, we came out and, uh, you know, they're a pretty big physical team and uh, they kind of took it to us at first and I think we settled down after that we just started playing our game. We play pretty sound defense and we usually try to get our kids in the right place and we did again tonight and they just started making plays. Uh, obviously, we're, we're uh, very excited about the win. It was a big win. East Lake's a good football team, district opponent and, uh, you know, as far as we were concerned, we're, we're trying to make a playoff run here, and we needed this game, and uh, kids played out, came out rather and played very well for us. It's the best uh, record so far that we've ever had. It's, uh, we've never been 3-0 in our district before. We've never won six in a row. We've never won six. So we have a lot of things going on, but you know, we got a big game next week, and we got to get the kids refocused and ready to play next week. I mean, who would have thought we would have made it this far uh, besides ourselves? You know, We believed it the whole time. We just execute what our coaches preach. And, uh, oh man, I just, you know, I've never been on a winning Palm Harbor team and 6-2 and two sounds really good to me right now. 
when Pinellas County Schools go to bed at night knowing that they're playing for me the next day, this is what they see. And again tonight, the Miners, 34 consecutive victories now over Pinellas County. They knock off Indian Rocks Christian in a key district battle, 15 to two. We gotta stay in it for the whole game, all right? Sir. Let's go! 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 And stay in it, they did. Indian Rocks Christian, ranked number three in Class A, comes into this game without top running back Ethan Engelberg, who was out with an injured foot. But Johnny Sitton, 27 carries for 93 yards and some strong inside running here by Lou Mason. Helped keep Fort Meade on its heels for most of the game. But they couldn't punch it in, and Fort Meade could. Here's DeMorris Grace. He's going to run this one 93 yards in the second quarter. This makes it 7 0 and it was all the points that Fort Meade would need in this game. Indian Rocks Christian wasn't done. Johnny's sitting here with an interception to thwart a minor drive. He then returns this kickoff into Fort Meade territory. But again, the Fort Meade defense comes up strong, stopping Indian Rocks Christian as they cruise to a 15 2 victory and a 10th straight district championship. Ridgewood, with a chance to spoil Springstead's season, gets off to a bad start on this Sterling Ross fumble. That sparked a big night for Springstead. The Eagles quickly capitalized with this 35-yard Mike Greco touchdown run, but Ross answers here with a two-yard run to tie it at seven early. Springstead's offense would score three more times, including a 58-4-yard screen to Ben Nuri before the half. Mala gets one of his two rushing scores here, Springstead wins 28 to 14 and will play Tarpon Springs for the district title next week. Cody, I think we've been remiss in referring to Plant as a finesse team all year. The Panthers are as physical as anyone around. They proved that tonight against Chamberlain, holding Chiefs all-purpose quarterback Dante Acock to minus two rushing yards and a big win. I think Bob Wiener deserves a lot of credit winning games without Aaron Murray. A lot of coaches deserve a lot of credit. I think Dale Caparasso at Spoto's done a great job. Jay Allison at Northeast. Pete Just at Palm Harbor. All have their teams on the brink of a playoff berth. I think Jesuit peaked way, way, way too early. The Tigers won their first four games of the year. They have since lost their last four, and they're out of playoff contention for the second consecutive year. I think one of the sexiest sports writers I know back in week two predicted that golf would be 8-0 heading into this big week against Pasco. I think that guy is still pretty sexy and I think he's pretty correct but I think golf uh, loses one of their final two games I think something feels eerie in here tonight it seems like Izzy's still around that might just be my sexiness no it's not that no you sure it just feels weird I think the hair on the back of your neck is standing up <sighs> I think I smell sausage it's time, time for Friday night, night rewind shout outs Woo! Cody will start the shout outs with Hillsborough County's next great quarterback, Quentin Williams of Jefferson, 262 passing yards, three TDs, and a 41 21 route of Alonzo. I'm going to combine a bunch of shout outs into one here. I got four quarterbacks in Pinellas County that threw for touchdown passes and ran for touchdowns Danny Reyes of Tarpon Springs, uh, Josh Rembert of Gibbs, Eric Miller of CCC and Jimbo Schmelick of Countryside. Wow, that's pretty good, Cody. Thanks. Bubba Golden of Golf, 25 carries, 202 yards, three TDs, and a 30 to 14 win against Zephyr Hills. That clinches Golf's second playoff berth in program history. Aaron Murray of Plant through seven to... Whoa, sorry, a flashback. Uh, ben Sam, St. Petersburg, three touchdown runs. St. Petersburg, Green Devils, one win away from the playoffs. How about the brother tandem of Connor and Keller Powers of Newsom? They combined for 290 rushing yards and a 17 to 12 win at East Bay. Newsom has won five in a row. Mike Lang of Largo, two touchdown catches, 64 and 70 yards. Time's winding down. Time for our kicker. You can't pronounce it. I'm going to tee it you up and try. You cannot. Northeast kicker Lucas Krastek, wow. a 23 yard field goal with 25 seconds left to give his team a 31 28 lead against Lakewood. But the Spartans return the ensuing kickoff down to the 12 yard line. That's where Tim Tisdale picks off a pass in his end zone to preserve Northeast victory. I have to personally apologize to Lucas' parents for that pronunciation and give a shout out to Izzy Gould, his time staff writer, who's been portraying the role of creepy guy. And to be quite honest with you, he's really not that. Creepy. He's, I wouldn't go that far. No, boy, you wouldn't. You think he is? That, I don't yeah. know. Okay, well, take that shot out back. <laughs> this is Friday Night Rewind.